All right, welcome everybody to the February 16th Hyperledger Technical Oversight Committee call. As everyone on this call is aware, two things that we must abide by. The first is the antitrust policy notice that is currently being displayed on the screen. And the second is our code of conduct. All right, for announcements today, we have two announcements. We have the standard Dev Weekly Developer Newsletter that goes out each Friday. If you want to include something in there about uh, a project release, a pull request, a community event, or anything that you have that you'd like to include, click on that link and find the, late, find the uh, link for the upcoming newsletter and add something there. The second announcement that we have is related to the Hyperledger mentorship program that has kicked off. Uh, we're currently looking for mentorship project proposals, and those need to be in by March 15th. And we will be having Min talk to us more about what the mentorship program is uh, in case you have any questions related to that. Um, we will get there very shortly. Um, any other announcements that anybody has before we head to the quarterly reports? Um, Tracy, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Hi. Good morning. Um, I just wanted to let everybody know last night I went to a developer week. It's a, a developer uh, conference here in the Bay Area and uh, Hyperledger was awarded the Devi for blockchain, Web3 and cryptocurrency uh, in the in that category. Um, and it was really great. There was hundreds of people there and, um, you know, a lot of folks came up to us and uh, talked, you know, asked about Hyperledger. And um, I would recommend that we look at making sure we submit lots of talks next year because there's definitely interest in the work that we're doing. So congratulations to the community for that. And it's, it's on Twitter. I think I put some pictures on Twitter if you want to go take a look at it on our Twitter profile. Very cool. Thank you, Daniela. Any other, uh, any other announcements? No? Okay. All righty. So the quarterly reports. Uh, so we did get Aroha in. It was on the... Um, was in for last week's, but we didn't have it on the agenda last week. So I made sure to include it here for anybody who hadn't had a chance to take a look at it. Uh, we do have some, as far as I know, I haven't looked this morning because I've been in calls for the last hour and it's only eight o'clock here. But um, <laughs> we, uh, we did have some of those quarterly reports that hadn't been reviewed by everybody uh, in the TOC. I do have a question about what we want to do for the quarterly reports now that they're on GitHub. Do we want to wait for everybody to review those quarterly reports before we merge them? Do we want to have the majority of us have had reviewed it before we merge it? Or um, what sort of thoughts do you guys have about, um, about getting everybody to sign off before we um, merge? Um, like my suggestion would be to give 14 days time for somebody to review and like, and if it's still not reviewed, then the TOC should be reminded, but PR can be merged within that period. Okay, thanks, Arun. Peter? I support the same idea. There should be a period of time specific that is there the reviewers can ask questions or review uh i will just add that if there's any ongoing discussion that is just for any reason still going on after the 14 days or whatever time we choose then we shouldn't merge until everything's been discussed okay thanks peter right uh, well, Peter and Arun uh, just laid out exactly what I was going to say. It, it should be up for a couple of weeks, some short bound period of time. And if they're in auto merged and if there's ongoing conversation, you know, give it a little, give it another meeting or something. So I agree. Okay. Thanks, Ryan. Marcus? 
Yeah, so some time out policy makes sense for me. But so what was the approach when the reports were on the on the wiki? Uh, so they were kept on the agenda for um, for like, so they were put on the agenda as soon as they showed up. And if they showed up on the Thursday of a TOC me meeting, they were put on the agenda for the next week so that people who might have missed it the previous week could uh, review it. And then they were not put on the agenda again, and most likely forgotten. There's, I would guess, probably some uh some reports out there that still don't have check marks from some of the toc members in the past uh so i guess that's maybe a, a similar sort of approach that's being recommended here is that two weeks and then merge unless there's still ongoing discussion okay but so what about the case where i mean nobody knows the T, uh, toc uh, members would basically, I mean, uh, approve this thing. I mean, they reviewed it, but don't approve because yeah, they're just not happy with the contents. Then the just the timeout policy wouldn't make so much sense, right? Yeah, we. I mean, we've never really had the case where people weren't happy, right? <laughs> um, I don't. We've always discussed if there's been any sort of concerns that were brought up in the in the re quarterly reports in the TOC call. So uh, that we could resolve any sort of potential issues that might exist out there. Um, but yeah, I don't think there's really been any case where, you know, somebody has been like, I'm just not going to approve it because I don't think that it's valid. Uh, they either didn't approve it because they, well, I don't know why they didn't approve it because, uh, yeah, I'm not that person. So I can't, uh, I can't speak on their behalf, but um, yeah, hopefully that helps Marcus. Right. I mean, I, I just think that, uh, I mean, the, the GitHub term approve is maybe a little bit misleading, right? I mean, it's not that the TOC yeah. here approves the contents of the report. They just, uh, we just use this as a tool to mark that we basically reviewed it, right? That's correct. And if anybody does have comments, then they provide yeah. those comments directly. All right. Thank you. So yeah. I think I think there is a way to catch that uh, case that uh, Marcus was talking about. Is like you know I think the the policy you talked about is pretty good, but I think the catch is to say after two weeks we need a majority of the uh, of the the talk to have approved, and if there is no ongoing discussion or issue that was raised, then we can merge it. And that would allow yeah. for the case where somebody has raised an issue or uh, not enough people have really looked into it. Could I yeah, no, ask, that makes sense, Could I ask a, yeah. a, a question along these lines? So this report's been here for a week. The majority has approved it. Jim is the last remaining TOC member. Um, should this just be merged? I mean, it, there's, I, I was looking down here. It, it's not been me, two weeks. So no, we wait another week, that's all. Okay, well, that's what I was getting at. Like, it's not just the majority. So, okay, so we're gonna wait and by two weeks. Sorry to be super pedantic but, here. No, no, but it's, you're right. But, that's what uh, we need to write the policy so that we so agree this is it, so. By two weeks, do we mean two TOC meetings? Do we mean two calendar weeks? What if the uh, meeting is canceled in the interim? Like, what do we mean by two weeks? When days. I say we, I mean you. <laughs> For 14 days um, from the time that it was submitted is how I took that to mean. Uh, if anybody has any uh, objections to that, please, please say so. No, I agree. That's what I was going okay. to say too. Okay, I'm getting some thumbs up, so good. Hey, this is Jim here. By the way, I just approved it, uh, but still wanted to double check. Um, did we say unless it's been unanimous, unanimously approved, we don't merge it? Uh, no, that, I think what we're saying, Jim, I think yeah. what we're saying, Jim, is we wait for 14 days from the time that it was submitted. If uh, at that point, one of two things is true we do not merge it if there are still ongoing discussions we do not merge it or yep. 
if uh, there hasn't been over half of the POC members, we don't, okay. we don't merge it. Okay. Is, is that yeah. make sense to everybody? Yeah, sounds good to me. Okay, so for this sawtooth report. And then, and then wait, wait, wait one, one more addition to that. If everybody has approved it before the two weeks, we can merge it. Okay, so uh, I, I agree. So this sawtooth report was submitted on the 31st. Yep. Um, so I don't see yeah. any ongoing conversation. So this should just be merged. I would agree with that, yes. All right. Any any objections to that before I hit that confirm? All right, Stephen, that better not be an objection because I just merged it. Is not an objection. <laughs> um, um, governance by GitHub, I think, is a is a is is an important um, thing to get um, out in the community. Um, the the pull request model that that you're talking about, and the need to write things down, and the right and the need to have um, exemplar versions of using this is really helpful. Um, I've been trying to push this site type of governance at, you know, so many times governance documents get written in Google Docs and they're really hard to um, use for reaching consensus. And this type of consensus that we're talking about, I really appreciate this quite detailed discussion and this idea of getting it down to a concise set of notes. Um, and 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 sharing this out with others because other projects and and the whole idea of decentralized governance, um, the 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 GitHub or the the use of pull requests and GitHub to do this type of thing to do human governance based on this type of contribution model is actually I think super important and um, so I I think we that's one thing we can demonstrate to the community and encourage others, you know, the projects in the community to do this type of thing, um, uh, you know, to reach consensus on these. So thank you. Yes, you're welcome, Sue. Um, so I am going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the notes that I just wrote down on a piece, a post note. I will submit a PR to the, the GitHub repo with basically what we agreed to. So you guys can check my wording and see if it's correct uh, and make a comment on the PR if not. Uh, and then we'll get that merged in to, uh, to ensure that we've just captured the discussion that we've had. Okay, uh, that's the only comment that I had on the quarterly reports. Any comments from anybody else on quarterly reports before we hand it off to Min to Talk to us about the Hyperledger Mentorship Program. Okay. So thank you for that discussion. Min, over to you. Um, we're interested to learn more about the Hyperledger Mentorship Program and what we can do to help. Yeah, thank you, Tracy. Uh, thank you to the TOC for giving me the opportunity just to talk briefly about our annual mentorship program. Uh, I think many of you on this committee uh, know that Hyperledger Foundation runs an annual mentorship program, and this is actually our seventh year <laughs> of running this program, and the program has grown steadily over the years. You know, we started with five mentorship projects to last year we had 30. Um, so I think it's growing in size and also impact. Um, so yeah, uh, I think even I was looking at the uh, many of you right, on this committee actually have served in the uh, mentor role uh, in the last, um, you know, last year, even I, I see Peter, Arun, Bobby, and uh, Vakatraman, if I'm saying your name correctly. Um, so you know, you know, just through firsthand experience, you know, how this program has been run. And uh, so I really appreciate you volunteering your time um, to to be uh, to participate in the program. So really, this uh, so rice showing this, uh, the screen here, this gives you kind of overview of the program. So I think really, it you know, I think we have a lot of people uh, who are interested in entering um, uh, into our community, but finding it 
perhaps hard, um, not only just the, the space of the technology, but I think there's just so many resources. Sometimes it's hard for them to find an entry point. So I think this program kind of creates that avenue for those people who are seeking in, uh, entry into the community, giving them sort of that hands-on learning opportunity. And because we have a program, so it creates that structure to connect the men mentees with the mentors. And uh, it, we also create structures to kind of help the mentors and the mentees uh, to do project planning. You know, once they're in the program, there's regular, you know, checking and evaluations to make sure, you know, things are progressing. Uh, and I think, you know, because of the structure and the, the existence of this program, it really provides that sort of guided, consistent learning for these new contributors over a sustained period of time versus, you know, people come and casually, you know, learning or maybe getting a little bit of mentoring here and there. But this really is, you know, these people are here getting consistent, guided, that kind of learning experience over a really sustained period of time. So I just want to emphasize that. And, and if you look at, you know, previous year's projects, they're really deliverable based, right? At the end of the mentorship project, uh, the mentees are expected to do, you know, A, B, C, these three things, you know, things might change, you know, over the course of the mentorship, but it is very much deliverable based and learning based. And uh, so, so yeah, it's been, um, I, I, I feel like I've been running this for the last few years and I've talked to a lot of mentors and mentees and, and staff, and we are making some little changes uh, over the years. And for this year, particularly, uh, we want to reserve some spots for um, especially projects or labs or, or any other, you know, uh, projects within the community who are looking for help with documentation. Um, I think Last year, we even had one or two projects, uh, you know, with the main deliverable beam documentation, but this year we want to really make it ex pretty explicit. Uh, so, right, if you go to the mentorship projects and click on the 2023 on the left, the label, yep, 2023 projects. You can see, actually, we already got two projects, uh, and we have a new label called Primary Focus. So these two, obviously, they, uh, their primary focus is coding. But if somebody is submitting a project with the primary focus of uh, being documentation, that label will show documentation. So just make it you know, put, you know, clear labeling so that people will know what's the primary focus of the mentorship project. So I encourage. Um, all of you, and also uh, if you talk to any project maintainers, if they have any needs in, you know, obviously coding, uh, uh, documentation, or research, you know, encourage them to submit a project proposal. Uh, the project proposal, we're accepting project proposal now through March the 15th, uh, so there's still about a month, um, so there's ample time for people to uh, think about uh, what kind of gaps and needs they have in their projects, and hopefully you'll submit a project proposal, and uh, We'll connect you with those who are looking to enter into our community and work on those projects and help you out. Um, otherwise, I, I just want to emphasize, yes, I, this is really a win-win, right, for all of us. It's, it's a win for those who want to come to uh, learn to contribute and become a uh, productive contributor uh, to the hyperledger community and also win for um, all of our projects and, and uh, six or working groups who are looking to address gap in whether that's coding, documentation or research and as a way to onboard new contributors. Um, and I've this year we actually created a, 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 a mentorship alumni group on LinkedIn. I was just looking um, today, actually the last few days, um, many of them actually are still, you know, working in the blockchain space, um, or they found some, you know, software engineering um, jobs. I, you know, it's my hope that what they did here gave them that leg up in their professional or academic pursuits. So, um, you know, uh, so this just makes me feel really good at the end of the day, seeing, you know, what, what we did here really helped them uh, in that pursuit. And many of our mentees also have, um, you know, uh, wrote about their experience uh, in our blog posts. So I'll post the link here. If you, you've probably seen some of those posts, uh, but 
um, just so that, oh, chat is disabled. Uh, okay. Um, so I cannot post the link, you but if use, you use Discord. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, if you just go to hyperledger.org, you know, uh, we just recently posted about 10 um, blog posts, and those are written by the mentees uh, who graduated from our program last year. They reflected about their experience, what they learned, and highlights, and what they are planning to do next. And many of them, you know, hope to continue to contribute. So I think that's, you know, uh, that's kind of the outcome we're, you know, looking for. Um, so as I mentioned, yeah, proposal is open from uh, till March 15th. And uh, one last thing I do want to mention, uh, I would like to, um, so once we close the proposals, uh, submission phase, we are looking for four to five members from this group to review all the proposals that we get um, to see, just to, to evaluate, to make sure, you know, the ones that we are um, getting, especially, you know, mentees who are receiving a stipend, uh, those proposals are uh, relevant to our community, uh, to our projects, adding values. Um, so what's Tracy's What's the process of getting, uh, you know, four, I think four to five people from this group uh, to have a, to have them, uh, to have to review the proposal we get um, by mid March. Yeah, so I think last year what we did was we just uh, asked for volunteers on this call, mm -hmm. uh, and I think we had four or five people step up on the call yep. and say that they would like to be part of that group of reviewers. So, uh, yeah, I guess if, if you all would like to volunteer, uh, I guess raise your hand now. And, okay, Peter, Peter. that's one. Marcus, that's two. Marcus. Arun? Sorry, quick question. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I mean, I raised hand for two purposes. So when is this review period is going to be? When is the... Right, the, the review period of proposals. Yeah, so it'll be the two weeks after we co close the proposal. So, right, if you can go to the Hyperledger Mentorship Program, just the overview page. Yep, uh, scroll down. Yeah, the program dates. So right now the proposal is open and then from March 16th to the 30th is the mentorship project proposal review by TOC. Perfect, works for me, thank you. Perfect, thank you so much. So okay. Peter, Any other volunteers? Marcus, um... So one question, do we have as a TOC already some evaluation um, criteria in order to better estimate if a project makes sense or not, or maybe requires more information, more details? So yes, I have documented this on the wiki. Um, Ray, if you could go to um, mentorship projects page, just go to that overview page, the, the project, yep. And then review the project proposal guidelines. So there's some. This is just you know based on uh, over the years. Uh, I've asked mentors and staff. This is what we came up, and you know we've made you know slight modifications over the years just to clarify certain points. Um, but this is basically uh, the guidelines. And then when we review and select, uh, that's kind of the process and criteria. I welcome any feedback if you um, if you have any. Okay, thanks. This is good that we have this already in place. I mean, it would require me to to look over it and think about it, understand it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that certainly helps. Great. So we have three volunteers. I would really like to have, I think four would be good just to have a, you know, a, a bigger group. We, we can do uh, more extensive arm twisting on Discord. 
<laughs> okay. Well, well I, thank I, you for. I figure, I, I figure the more quiet we are, maybe we'll get somebody to put their hand up. Um, the reason I am not putting my hand up is because last year I had to serve as a, a tiebreaker. So I assume that's going to be the case potentially again this year. Okay. Well, if you, uh, as a TOC member, if you do decide that this is something that you would like to participate in, Min is willing and welcome to have your hand go up um, to, to volunteer to, to review the proposals. Absolutely. Yeah, so thank you. And uh, if you have any questions, please let me know, or you can email mentorship at hyperledger.org. I'll answer from there. Yeah. Any questions that anybody has for Min? Peter, your hand is still up. I assume that's still from the volunteer. Okay. Uh, any questions that anybody has for Min? Marcus? Yes, so I think last uh, year I was wondering if some of our projects also participate in, in different mentor mentorship programs like Google Summer of Code or whatever is out there. And if those uh, yeah, different forms of mentorship programs are also, I mean, encouraged or supported by, by Hyperledger. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so this mentorship program that we run here, obviously is separate from Google Summer of Code, but yeah, community members are definitely encouraged to also, um, you know, you leverage other mentoring programs out there, such as Google Summer of Code. There's also Outreachy. Um, those are the two main ones that I know of. Um, and there's the, uh, uh, Google also runs a, uh, season of docs kind of focusing on kind of documentation uh, type of uh, I think it's sort of also considered mentoring um, but by the end of that you know mentorship um, the intern or the mentee is, are expected to produce documentation um, obviously you know summer google of code or any other programs that they, uh, run outside of linux foundation you know they have their separate um, process you just follow their process um, uh, here obviously you know we our focus is on happy lecture, you know, any projects that are going to advance our community work and our projects and labs, you know, you're more likely to get, you know, uh, approved and get that stipend funding to get a mentee to work on it. But if you do a Google Sum of Code, you know, Google obviously has a lot of um, funding and but you're competing with, you know, many other um, open source projects out there. Did I answer your question, Marcus? I mean, yeah, I mean, that pretty much makes sense for me. Um, I mean, I also understand, uh, or if I think about that, so I could imagine that uh, the motivation by Google could uh, could also say, look, uh, Hyperledger, they have their own mentorship program, so why would we accept uh, any Hyperledger project uh, in the Google mentorship program? I don't know. Uh, yeah, I do know CNCF. They uh, run, you know, the, a lot of their projects, you know, they have their own very sizable mentorship program here run at the Linux Foundation, but also a lot of their projects also go to Google Summer of Code. So it's mm -hmm. not like, you know, their projects get rejected just because CNCF already runs a sizable mentorship program within the Linux Foundation. But so do we know of any uh, Hyperledger project which was participating in a different mentorship prog program other than the Hyperledger one? Not that I know of. I know several years ago, maybe uh, before we even started our formal mentorship program, I think maybe there was a try, somebody tried to um, submit one to Google Summer Code, but it was rejected. Mm. And I think last year, uh, David, correct me if I'm wrong, I did somebody submit something to Google's uh, Season of Docs? But maybe that yeah, was not yeah, no, That's exactly right. We did support uh, um, a submission to Season of Docs. We weren't accepted. I think part, as we learned in the process, the I don't think it was 
we didn't have an exact reason why it was rejected. They don't really provide that. But from what we understood from talking to CNCF and others, I don't think the criteria that Google uses is if a community has a separate mentorship project, but what they do look is they try to have organizational diversity. So I think we were competing basically with other people from the LF. So there was a limited number of LF slots um, and the season of docs went to other LF projects. So it seemed like that was the big limiting factor. That's why we looked to see what could we do on our end to support documentation more. So I'm really excited about explicitly adding documentation to this year's mentorship program. As Min said, there has been documentation projects in the past, such as the Cacti workshop project last year, but I think making it more explicit and explicitly inviting people in to do a documentation project will be uh, helpful. But that having been said, if somebody wants to try to submit to Season of Docs again this year, we're happy to help you with that. If you want support submitting to that or, or a different program, let us know and we can help. But um, yeah, as Min said, we've tried a couple times in the past, but haven't had a lot of success with other mentorship programs. Well, thanks for the question, Marcus. Any other questions that we have for Min before we move on? All right, I'll make one last call. Did anybody uh, have a change of heart or decide that they wanted to, to volunteer as well? Okay, we'll have to do some outreach then. See if we can convince somebody else to volunteer. Sounds good. Thank you all. All right, thanks, Ben, for presenting that to us. Uh, hopefully, we'll see a lot more project proposals coming in from folks. Uh, and also, if you know of somebody out in the community who you think would make a great mentor, um, please reach out to them as well and encourage them to submit a, um, a project proposal for the mentorship program. All right, so uh, any other kind of discussion items that people would like to cover before we move on to the task force discussion? No, okay. So I think then the task force discussion, Bobby, actually, I think you wanted to cover documentation today and not the onboarding content, but I picked the next one in the, uh, in the, in the, um task list task force list um do we need to cover the documentation one today or shall we cover the onboarding content um i think we can touch on both i'm really prepared for the documentation but both meetings are basically kicking up um around the same time so it's okay if we do them together so i'm just okay. going to screen real quick to talk about the documentation is everybody seeing a wiki page we can. We are now. Yep. Yeah. Uh, hold on a second. That shouldn't be there. Trying to get rid of my uh, Zoom. Okay, there we go. So the documentation task force initially started a year and a half ago through the learning materials working group. Um, we really didn't get um, into recommendations, but we did a lot of fact finding and surveying. <clears throat> so I incorporated that into what we're looking for now. So now the mission is to just establish some concrete documentation standards for the community. Like it's open source, so it's everybody has choices and, and, and a ton of ways that they prefer to do things. And we're not trying to step on those, but uh, as I show you when we went through the survey um, answers, a lot of people do want some guidance. They just wanna know what, you know, what their choices are or where, you know, what, what is recommended to get started. Um, so that's our goal is to provide the developers, users, and stakeholders with high quality technical documentation that's accurate, accessible, and easy to understand. So you got to be able to find it, it has to be correct, and you have to be able to like use it to your end goal. Um, and it's easier when there's standards to develop on these platforms um, and utilize them better. Um, so each project and each team comes with different maintainers and different ideas, and we're really not trying to force any of these suggestions. We're just saying, you know, we have this tooling set you can use. We have um, this project uses this, and this is how they do it. You know, we need to come up with those types of 
suggestions, I'll call them, um, for the community to use. So I guess the tasks we need to complete um, would be to um, evaluate the current environment, which we did gather the information for that, um, and you know, look into what people are using, what are the publishing platforms that are popular in our community. Um, then, you know, through this new task force that's coming out of the Technical Steering Committee, um, we're going to start having regular meetings. Everyone is, is welcome to attend. Um, and we're going to go over, you know, the results of what we found out and try to figure out what are the community's best practices for creating documentation. You know, they have to be, you know, what are the uh, resources that Hyperledger is offering? Um, what are the you know training materials that you need or technical documentation that you need for people? Um, and can we use this? And this is where the um, best practices task force, which really isn't kicking off just yet, but where that will come into play at the end. What documentation do incubated projects need as opposed to you know active projects? What you know it, it needs to kind of also flow with. Um, the life cycle of a project. Um, documentation to me is a living thing. So you have to keep it moving and keep it going. And then there are different needs for docu for technical documentation. Um, new projects, they're looking for complete guidelines. They're like, where do we start? Where do we start? You know, they need the templates. They need, you know, to know what we offer for them to support them and existing projects. They're updating, you know, do they want a re redo their look? Do they want a new look? What, again, they might have questions. So um, I think Tracy and I, or the group had discussed some of these deliverables, we'll be creating a common style guide, uh, recommending some publishing platforms that are available to the community, uh, creating best practices for documentation, like what tooling is available and uh, what audiences do your technical documentation need to um, target um, and create those templates so it is, you know, just as easy. And user guides, you know, you just can't, um, someone coming in who's never really created the documentation from GitHub, there needs to be a primer for that. You need to be able to go watch a video or something that says, you know, this is what Hyperledger offers. These are how you select what you want. This is how you, you know, add this file to your um, command line to get it going, you know, whatever you need to do um, to get that easy for people creating documentation so that's not a roadblock for them. Um, in my estimate, we should be done with this in three to four months. Um, there have been people who have volunteered. Um, hopefully there'll be more names added to this list. This is, um, I know it's going to go over in GitHub, but right now it's just easier to throw all these thoughts on a wiki page for me. Um, so that's what I did. And I'll put the link in Discord um, for each of the task forces in the Discord channel. Um, so we're talking, David um, and the Learning Materials Working Group, which is no more, by the way. We say goodbye to the Learning Materials Working Group. We're revamping it again for more specific functions that it did rather than just this general, no one really knows what it does, um, working group. So with that, um, we're going to take over that time slot unless um, the folks who are in the task force decide that's not a, a convenient time. So right now, um, I believe David was going to change the calendar link to show um, on the 20th, I believe, the um, not the 20th, that's President's Day, the next um, following Monday, to reflect um, the two task forces that will take over that hour, half hour for each task force. Um, so that will be the meetings. Um, there is a Discord channel for um, discussion on this task force, and I put that link there. Um, some of the references for some of the material I'm going to go over really, really quickly. Um, here was a survey we gave out to the maintainers for, or maintainers and community um, developers, um, and 14 people answered, and I'll show you a little bit quickly the results. Um, this is a link to a page, which I'm going to go to, hopefully my computer will agree with me, yes, um, that Tracy supplied that... Um, lets the community know some supporting resources that they have available if they in fact want to use them. So I put a link to that because one of those is um, what the community suggests for the technical documentation. Um, so that's that link. Um, and then this was just a best practice guide from several years ago that was in a templated um, 
file in the learning materials working group for um, people to review. So again, the survey, I just grabbed three or four uh, points. Most people um, really want to redo or have um, the documentation reflect um, quick starts, examples, graphs, um, all of the above. So it's definitely a need in the community. Um, a lot of people think that um, a modern look, um, simple, easy to read is the way to go. I mean, we're, that's very clear. Um, and uh, most folks want a quick guide and example projects in their user guides, um, which I think is a great idea where you have um, links to other things if you need a deeper dive in any concepts. Um, then this one is very interesting. Um, very important for product adoption is visual aids, graphs, and charts. So right now, if you look at like the landscape page, um, that is very uh, visual, very graphic, lots of charts, lots of graphs. But if you look at the GitHub documentation, um, it's very, you know, it pulls right from the code. So it's not really spiced up. And uh, apparently the, the audience or the community really would like some incorporation um, and guidelines on that. I mean, you know, it's hard to develop graphics and if they're already developed in the community, why not use them? So that was basically uh, some of the um, things that came. And if you wanna take the survey, um, it that the survey is right here. Um, so go ahead and the responses, if you wanna see the other responses, they're right there. Um, and then moving along um, to discover what we are using now. Um, so most of the project use read the docs. Um, Few projects um, use non-traditional documentation. So this graph here, it doesn't fit on my screen, but it basically shows um, what each group is using at this particular time. And um, basically just for reference purposes um, to get an idea of what the community is using. And when the task force starts meeting, hopefully we'll incorporate um, what we can gain from that um, table into our um, best practices. So then moving along, we're also going to be working on, you know, creating doc best practices for documentation. And, you know, I just threw a few ideas before we meet um, next to discuss, you know, what does that look like? What do we want? Um, is there different for maintainers and developers? Who's your target audience? General guidelines for, you know, writing technical documentation. Um, and then a badging system. Um, is this is a, a link to a style guide um, for publishing through Hyperledger that was um, put out there by the marketing department that's available for everyone to reference. Um, and then basic documentation. Um, I know David and Hart had talked about, and Arun had um, kicked around um, some of the criteria um, needed for graduated projects. And I'm thinking of incorporating, or hopefully the task force is thinking of incorporating some of the things we come up with possibly into to this um, information and then then just some ideas. Um, again, I think standardized graphics, um, a, a glossary section, and um, basic concepts like a, a, a common blockchain primer that um, instead of having these new projects labs come in and think that they have to write this enormous um, MOOC for um, um, MOOC for um, their specific project, maybe Hyperledger can supply a glossary and some basic you know, blockchain concepts that they can just link to um, and not have to worry about um, anything but how to use their particular um, software. So that is basically for the um, documentation, um, the onboarding. Um, I should ask first. Hey, if hey Bobby. Yeah, sorry yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah, before, before we move on. Uh... Well, I, I wanted to um, bring up something that I've done since we met on Monday uh, okay. related to the documentation task force. I did put a link in the uh, Discord channel, but I'm happy to share it here as well if you would like to see kind of um, what's happening there. Um, um, or um, you can open it as okay. well. That's fine. Um, so I, I took some time to use the... Uh, that's not the one. <laughs> that was an answer to somebody else's question this morning. Uh, so it was my um, message before. Yeah, so uh, that's not the one either. Sorry. <laughs> <Excuse> <laughs> <scrolling>. <laughs> 
That was a second we'll, answer to Christine's We'll get question. it. <laughs> yeah, we're getting, here we go. Uh, so if you want to click on the second one there. The, this one. Yeah. So I put together a documentation template repo uh, that we might start and, and utilize, which is basically uh, intending to bring together all of the different sorts of uh, material that I think is useful. If you hit the hamburger, you should see a menu that kind of covers the different items that um, that are available. Uh, to to start looking at. And so the sorts of things, obviously, uh, Bobby, I didn't look at all the, the material you had uh, there, which was really great material that you shared with us. But this uh, is a basically a template repository that somebody could start with and then basically build out for their particular documentation to see information about how to get started with the project. Uh, right now, there's just placeholders for a lot of this stuff. The only place that I actually filled in information was in the contributing section, where I found some uh, documentation that was kind of interesting for going through and specifying how somebody might contribute or report a bug or request a change. Obviously, all words that can be changed, um, but just something for people to react to and kind of see the different sorts of things that are probably useful to have in the documentation. And Bobby, I think we should align this with with kind of what you guys have already done uh, last year in the learning materials working group to see if there's mm -hmm. anything that was missed that we should add to this or anything that um, should be changed. So, but I, I think, you know, by providing a, uh, a template repo for people to just start from uh, allows them to understand the sorts of things that they should include in their documentation um and and work through and this uses uh the material for make docs which is something that um is the recommendation for future documentation projects i think from hyperledger uh and so yeah uh i think we could you know take a look at that and provide some thoughts feedback pull requests even on the the repo itself um for creation of issues that sort of thing so just wanted to, to share kind of what i've been working on since we met on Monday. That's awesome. Thanks for all that heavy lifting. So basically, I guess to continue, am I on mute? Uh, no, you're not on mute, but Marcus has a question. Is oh, go ahead. Marcus. Yeah, Bobby, thanks for uh, I mean, showing those um, outcomes of the survey. I mean, this is super interesting. So, so when you showed this, I was actually wondering if um, if there's a particular project which basically covers all of the needs of, uh, let's say, the general users, um, or um, but so I'm wondering if it would make sense basically to also, I mean, add to such a survey the question hey, what of um, the hyperledger projects uh, um, are you happy with in terms of documentation? So, which projects can improve? Not in the sense that we would like to raise the um, point with the finger of a project and in order to say, hey, you have to make it better, but more as a to figure out what people actually um, would agree that this is already good documentation and which can be then also uh, be used as an example for other projects. It, yeah, that's exactly what um, the task force is going to try to determine. Um, so hopefully we'll see you on Monday, Marcus. <laughs> we'll add your name to the list. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's basically we, we, we were trying to pinpoint that exact yeah. um, concept. All right. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, so I'm going to try to navigate back to the... Take me a moment. And, and just okay. FYI, Bobby, your share has stopped. I don't know if that yes. was intentional okay. or okay. Okay, so um let me share again. Any other so, comments on the documentation stuff before we move on to the onboarding? Okay, Bobby, 
all yours. Okay, great. So onboarding, again, I set up a wiki page really just to throw the information somewhere that um, people can edit and manage um, before we put it back in the, in, in the GitHub as a recommendation. Um, when we talked about onboarding, um, the Learning Materials Working Group had kind of always thought that their meetings were, were accomplishing that, but as participation went down, it obviously um, it needed to be more topic specific. So instead of a general meeting that talked about whatever anybody needed, we're going more with specific meetups or specific topic driven um, ideas. Um, with that said, onboarding has always been an issue of um, how to do it, where to do it, and how to conquer it. So that's what the onboarding task force um, is going to try to uh, define and um, come up with suggestions. So there's different groups that need onboarding content that's geared differently, and I think that that's where the group has decided to more start, like to try to figure out what each one of these um, community members need and how we can and how we can deliver that again this is not filled out we're going to start doing that on Monday uh, when we meet um, for the bottom half of the hour um, so we're going to be doing the onboarding and the documentation kind of together um, on that time and if we need more time we can always add it and this also has a discord channel I'll put that link in here um, so we're trying to, again, try to make it easy for developers to find the technical documentation and get started. Like one of my questions on the survey was, you know, when you um, read your documentation, can you take it and create your own project or are you basically just following the steps? And when you're done, have no idea where to start your own project. So that's something to look at too. You know, we want this to be usable docu technical documentation. Um, and that's just one of the things that um, for onboarding, we have to consider um, also the onboarding here, the content is for the you know, onboarding um, SIG chairs, how do you run a meeting, what do you need to do, that kind of stuff. We want that also easily and at pe people's fingertips. Um, you know, when you're a TOC, a new TOC member, you, you Discord, um, you have the wiki pages, you, you know, where am I going, what am I doing, that kind of um, help. Um, so we're hoping that these guides can onboard, whether it's a button on the main Hyperledger page, uh, welcome, or how to get started, or start here, I know is um, one of um, Arun's, and uh, again, they're on the task force too, I just haven't filled out the information yet. Um, we're going to take a whole lot of um, people, a whole lot of thinking, a whole lot of um, good energy, and try to figure out how we can get more people who are interested to go past that first click of what is Hyperledger and actually get involved. Um, and again, Min is absolutely correct. The mentorship program is one of the best um, methods for that. Um, so hopefully we're going to be doing um, meetups um, that are geared to getting people into the mentorship program in the next um, few weeks, um, stuff like that. So if you have any idea or want to help with onboarding task force to get people into the community, working in the community, not just looking at the community, but actually involved in the community, please come out to that Monday, um, 1230 Eastern Standard Time meeting, um, and we'll get started with that one as well. And then I'll take questions on the onboarding in a second. But after these two are kind of done, that's going to like migrate into the best practice badging task force that got approved also. Um, but we want these in place first before um, we move on to that one. So if there's any questions on the onboarding task force, I know people are afraid to ask because then you're in, on the task force. <laughs> I'll recruit you right away. Um, so hopefully everybody will come out that will make the calendar invite and an announcement um, will be sent out and I'll put the information on the Discord channel, which is easy to find um, on the Discord under TOC. Um, so thank you for letting me present these and I hope that these task force get started with a lot of energy and a lot of people come out. So thank you. All right, thanks, Bobby, for covering both of those today. Any questions or comments on kind of what's been done or what the intention of these task forces are? No, everybody's hoping to have three minutes to 
take before their next meeting. Um, so I will give that to you. Uh, so thank you all for coming today. We will cover, I guess, the fourth task force next week in the TOC call, and we'll see what else comes up on the agenda for us to include. Uh, we will also be reaching out to some folks and seeing if we can uh, twist some arms to, to get that fourth or fifth volunteer for the, uh, the mentorship project proposal review. And uh, with that, I will let you go. Have a great week, everybody. Thanks, Tracy. Thanks, Tracy.